Hi, my name is Alex. I am part of the Hoodie team, and this screencast is going to give you a quick first impression of what Hoodie does. Not so much what it is with all the technical background, but just the immediate usage, just to see what app development with Hoodie can be like. This is essentially the same coding demo that was part of the talk we held in March at apps.berlin.js, but with better sound and readable text. So what's going to happen is this. I've got a static HTML page, a to-do list, and it's currently lacking any app-specific behavior, and I'm going to add that. And because Hoodie is used from the client side, I'm going to add it in the browser console. So as you can see, there's nothing interesting going on so far. We're loading Modernizer, jQuery, the Hoodie library, and some Bootstrap plugins. And the Bootstrap plugins are basically just used to make this sign-up modal work. So we don't have to bother with any of that. So what we're going to do in the screencast is we're going to make the sign-up work, and we're going to make adding a task to this list work. So let's get going. First thing you always need to do is to instantiate Hoodie, which is fairly simple. It's just this, and that gives you Hoodie, and now you can do things with it. It gives you all the, the Hoodie API, basically. But back to the sign-up. So what we want to do is we want to listen to the click event of this, get these two fields, and then tell Hoodie to make a new user. So here's the boring jQuery bit, and now the hoodie part. So we tell hoodie account sign up, and that basically takes two arguments, as you would expect, the username and the password. And in, in principle, that's all we need, but we also want to update the view when that's done. So we wait for the promise. And then we do a couple of more things. Namely, we want to hide the modal and we want to greet the user in the title bar of the page. And there's a small helper for this. It's hoodie account username and that just gives you the current username. So that's that. Now we can sign up. Sign up. And there we go, we're signed in. And we can check with, as I just said, hoodie account username, that'll always give you who's currently signed in. Uh, so that was pretty simple, I think, because there's no prior setup or anything. You just call hoodie account sign up as soon as you've instantiated a new hoodie application and you can sign up users and that's it. And all the other user management functions are similarly short. So sign in, sign out, resend password, it's all just as easy. There's no real point in actually showing it all. Anyway, now we have a user uh, who's also automatically signed in, by the way. This button doesn't really reflect what's actually happening. Um, we can now make this form work. So there's a form for a new task. There's a submit button. And the deal is fairly similar. We've got a click handler. We get the form data. And we send the data to Hoodie. So I'm going to copy and paste this again. So what, now, what happened just now is we got the click event from the submit button, we got the contents of this field, and we told the hoodie store to add a new object. Now hoodie store add always takes two arguments, the first argument being the object type. Now you'll notice I haven't actually gone anywhere else into a database management program and defined that there now exists a data type task. This is all completely arbitrary and undefinable on the fly. You just tell it what you want it to be called, and Hoodie will make it happen, basically. And the task, uh, the object type is basically for you, so you can later get all objects of type task, for example. Uh, the second argument is basically all the data, and that's just a JSON object. And again, you don't have to predefine what this looks like or what the structure is. You just give Hoodie JSON, and it'll deal with it. So the button now actually already stores data, but the interface doesn't reflect it. So let's do something cool. Let's couple the view to the actual changes in the data store. So we don't have to actually wait for a remote server response because Hoodie saves everything into local storage or a local store first. 
so we can listen to the events from that. And this has the, the very interesting attribute of being essentially asynchronous, but also instant. So what the Hoodie Data Store does is send out various events whenever something interesting happens inside the data store. And we can couple our views directly to that changing data. So what we do is, and this is a lot like jQuery really, we tell the hoodie store that on every event of type add, which refers to an object of type task, which is what we define up here, we want this to happen. And this is basically find the task list in the DOM and append a list item with the task description. And this should now work. Work. And it does. That's fairly simple. So what if we wanted to pre-populate the list when the logged in user returns? For that, let's just reload the page and re-instantiate hoodie. And what we'll do this time is tell the hoodie store to find all objects of type task, empty the task list, iterate through all the individual tasks, and just append each one to the task list. And there you go. And there's a lot more, really. So hoodie apps continue to work when they're offline and sync back to the remote database automatically as soon as they can. That's just integrated. You can already send emails from the client. And we're currently working on public data and data sharing. After that, we're going for OAuth and payments. Now, hoodie is still considered a developer preview. And as such, it is, of course, incomplete and occasionally a bit odd but still a lot of fun to experiment with. It's available for OS X, Linux, and Windows, and um, please do check out hood.ie for more examples, uh, documentation of all the features we have thus far, links to GitHub, Twitter, our IRC channel, and uh, a lot of additional information, and of course, installation instructions. Well, that's basically it for now. Thanks for your time. Goodbye. <laughs>